Good day everyone. My name so my name is Angel Salva. So and now uh, I will uh, discussing about some information about global media. So first uh what is media talks about? So media so first uh in general media refers to a person means of communication so for example television uh, radio and the uh, response uh, and the uh, newspaper are different types of media so second is the terms can also be used as a collective noun for the for the phrase or uh, news reporting news and agencies so the third is in the computer world media is also word as a collective nouns but refers to a different types of data storage options so uh, basically so so basically when we have when we are trying to define uh, what is the meaning of vidya <clears throat> it was something to do with these things to use uh, music uh, movies and so on so because so uh, because basically it is something to do with technology so the integration of technology in terms of media it give us the image them it needs the help of technologies because as because as we know guys uh, without technology we cannot define we cannot easily define what is what is the use of media so also uh, it is a medium of people is the medium of people in order he or she to to uh, to transmit the idea to communicate to communicate the the idea to the other person or to the other people so that so that's why how i uh, interpret the media but then it has something to do the internet internet so that why then have a uh, music uh, movies magazine so because this is not only for commun this is not only for communication purposes it is something to do with giving us the idea that that media can also entertain us to entertain us so aside from this media now so we already defined what is the meaning of media so the next is jack lol professor of global students uh, global study studiers so describe me describe media as a means of converging something such as a channel of communication so jack lol so Marshall McLuhan, a uh, media series, once declared that the media in the message added that different media stim sa simultaneously extend and update the humans the human sensors. Uh, she can uh, she can added the different media so the third is uh mark charles mark lohan uh, is a media theorist so once declared that the medium is the message added the different media sim simultaneously extend and apotheid human sensors new media may expand the reach of 
communication but they also uh, dull the, the user communicative capacities so there's so so that so there's a uh, types of media so which is the print media broadcast media and digital media so when we say print media it's uh, books magazines and newspaper so understandable na siya guys so broadcast media is radio uh, film and television so the last is digital media which is uh, email uh, internet site uh, social media and internet internet based internet based video and audio so so the next slide is what is globalization so uh, globalization globalization describe the process by which our regional economics societies and cultures have became integrated through a global network and political ideas through communication transportation and trade so third is our second is the term also refers to a traditional circulation of ideas language and popular culture third globalization refers to a growing interconnectedness of different parts of the world a process which give rise to a complex form of interaction and independence so uh so basically uh in simple words so glo globalization means the spreading of spreading of business uh, culture or any technology on and on internet international level when the when the uh, boundaries of countries and uh, continents matter no more and the whole world uh, becomes our global village in itself so globalization is and is an uh, is an effort to reduce the reduce the uh what's the what's the meaning uh, what is the call of that uh reduce the grow uh geographical and political barriers for the smooth functioning of any business so so we have the main objective of globalization so the four main as aspect of globalization are capital and investment movements trade and transactions education and spread of knowledge along with uh, migration and unrestricted movement of people so <coughs> so uh so in simple words uh, i mean uh in simple terms so globalization uh visualize that one can pur purchase and set goods from any part of the world so communicate and interact with anyone anywhere in the world and also enables cultural exchange among the global populations uh, it is a uh, optional at uh, optional at three uh, three level namely uh, economic uh, global session um, cultural so cultural globalization and political globalization so so the next slide is what is what is what is the relationship between media and globalization so the mass media are since today as a play role in enhancing globalization facilitating culture and change and multiple those Information and image between countries through international news, broadcast, television, and programming, new technologies, and music. So, uh, nowadays, uh, mass, uh, mass media plays a viral and explanation, a extension of globalization process. So, uh, the media component, such as television, uh, movies, uh, 
uh, whatever, uh, etc. So, are considered to have a paramount influence of globalization. So, also, uh, also because of globalization process today, uh, there is a increase to access to access to to boundaries of media, which place is very important role in shipping uh, human shipping human minds uh, also has uh, also has a uh, demands uh, immense impact or on our society personal personal life so <coughs> those the those the two equally important processes uh, interact each uh, interact each other and provide a uh, mutual mutual assistance to expansion of the expansion of the uh, sphere of influence so so in simple terms so uh, in simple terms media and globalizations uh, comes along with uh, each others which is a uh, which is a uh, because of media uh there there has extensions so of globalization process and and because of and because of globalization there is a broad range with the usage of media so for for some information so uh i will show you a uh, video clip so start hi have you ever wondered how we came up to this 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 and many more of this <laughs> so hi any ideas what our topic today would be As you can see, the world today has already its transition from traditional to digital when talking about media. I would assume that you guys already knew what media is. You know it, right? Uh, you know, media that media that involves communication channels through which news, entertainment, education, data, or promotions are disseminated. Yes, that media. Okay. Uh, anyways. I am here to tackle about these things with you today. Our first topic will be the evolution of media and globalization. Scholars like Harold Innes, James Lull, Kerry Rantanin have found it logical to organize the historical study of media by time period, since each stage is characterized by a dominant medium. These are the time periods that scholars organized. We have the oral communication, script, the printing press, electronic media, and lastly, digital media. In 1950s, Harold Innes divided media into three periods, namely oral, print, and electronics. Later then followed by James Lull at the close of 20th century, adding digital. And lastly, in 2005, Terhi Rantanin added script before the printing press. Oral communication is known to be the oldest and enduring of all media. Despite numerous changes, the first and last thing that humans could share is the ability to speak. Speech has been with us for at least 200,000 years. When speech developed into language, it has become a medium that aids globalization. But how? Language help humans to move and allow them to cooperate, such as sharing information that would help the human's ability to travel and adopt virus environment like the land water and climate also sharing information about tools and weapons that led to the spread of technology language help humans to settle down it has transmitted information across generations leading into the creation of villages and towns it also led to markets trades, and giving rise to cities. According to Osler, language was their most important tool. 
script, the very first writing, allowed humans to communicate and share knowledge or ideas over much larger spaces and across longer times. Language was essential but imperfect. Distance is a hindrance. Time also caused difficulties and relies on human memory, which is hard because it has limited capacity. Hence, writing. Early writing system began to appear after 3000 BCE. Writing has also its evolution, from cave paintings, petroglyphs, and hieroglyphs, until it led to the creation of alphabets. However, script is about writing, so it needed to be written on something, right? Writing was first done as carvings in wood, clay, stones, bones, and many more. Ancient Egypt created the most popular paper from a plant named papyrus. With these writing surfaces, humans had a medium that propelled globalization. Script allowed a permanent codification of economic, cultural, religious, and political practice and were spread over large distances and handed down through time. The Printing Press It is said that it transformed markets, businesses, nations, schools, churches, governments, and many more. It also started the Information Revolution. Before it emerged, the production of written documents was low and expensive. With the birth of printing press, reading materials was surprisingly made cheaper and easily spread to everyone. This includes books, pamphlets, flyers. In 1979, Historian Elizabeth Eisenstein investigated the influence of the printing press, ranging from the Enlightenment, Protestant Reformation, the Scientific Revolution, and many more. First consequence was the changes of printing press to the very nature of knowledge. It preserved and standardized knowledge. Second is that the printing press encouraged the challenge of political and religious authority for it is able to circulate different views. Electronic media. A host of new media is apprising the system of globalization in the beginning of 19th century. These are the telegraph, telephone, radio, and television. All mentioned were the medium of electronic media. From the word itself, it requires electricity. The telegraph became a global medium for it eventually sent coded messages. Telephone with its ability to transmit speed over distance became the next communication breakthrough. Radio, the wireless telegraph that transmitted music and news, reaching regions without the construction of wires and roads. Televisions is considered the most powerful, brought together visual and the power of film with radio. Largely because of televisions, the world became a global village. Digital Media it has taken over our daily lives. The computer is the common representation of digital media. Anyone with computer has access to economic information. It also allows industry to access to a global marketplace. The social media allows citizens to communicate among themselves and adopt new practices and culture such as music, education, fashion, arts, and many more. As you can see, media made globalization possible. With the periods of media and globalization, we saw marked influence of media on globalization. It is beyond impossible to think that globalization is emerging without the influence of media. Now that we're done with our first topic, let's proceed to the global imaginary and global village. Global imaginary, as coined by Manfred Steger, refers to consciousness of belonging to a global community that has emerged with the rapid rise of communication technologies. In 1991, political scientist Benedict Anderson wondered how a group of people, despite the vast expand of land, has conceived themselves as a nation. These nations are said to be results of global imaginary. In 1996, Arjun Apadurai added, the imagination referred to the global imaginary is not a fantasy but a social fact. 
We learn that largely because of television, Marshall McLuhan proclaimed the world as a global village. So what is a global village? In 1964, Marshall McLuhan coined the term global village. It describes the phenomenon of worlds shrinking and expanding at the same time due to the technological advances that allow sharing of culture. Drawn closely by media, people would be like neighbors. In 1970, Lewis Mumford, one of Marshall McLuhan's critics, found hope in media for a village-like world of harmony and grace, but was dismayed as it was used for power, capitalism, militarism, profit, and more. Media and Economic Globalization The media, today is one of the largest industries in the world, plays a huge role in the process of economic globalization. It creates global capitalism and promotes conceptual foundation of the global market economy. Media has a remarkable economic influences from commercial on radio and television, product advertised in films, digital billboards, pop-up ads, and magazines. Media scholar Robert McChesney states that economic and cultural globalization would be impossible without a global commercial media system to promote global markets. Oligopoly, a market structure with a small number of firms, none of which can keep the other from having significant influence. The media oligopoly is not interested in the ideology of global village. It is only interested in one thing, profit. No news today. In this view, transnational conglomerates are much less interested than local media outlets in providing news and information necessary for netizens. People are encouraged to think of products, not politics, as consumers, not citizens. And that's a wrap. I hope it helped you in understanding media and globalization. So that would be all. Be safe and bye! So guys, uh, so that concludes our lesson 4. So I hope you learned something since we since we already know what the uh, the, uh, the different type of video uh, what's uh, global season so that is so thank you. Good afternoon everyone. I am going to report about globalization and media. So, what is globalization? Globalization, it is the dynamic process which refers to the development of our economy. So, globalization helps us to improve economic growth. What is media? Media is a passive way of channel which we can explore about different information. Five periods of the evolution of media and globalization. Oral communication. Language became the most important tool as human beings explore the world and experience different cultures. Primarily communication, 14th century. Typically happens in one of three ways. First, verbal second non-verbal and third is visual so when we say verbal it communicates through speaking or using our voice non-verbal it communicates through sign language or any movement that are not using our voice so visual a good example is when we see someone who wants to communicate using non-verbal or using a sign language we knew that someone wants to communicate us by the help of our eyes or seeing them two manuscript or print 1597 manuscript or print was invented by Johannes Gutenberg. So, manuscript or print 
is the way of writing. Telephone, 1844. Telephone was invented by Alexander Graham. Telephone is used to call someone that is far away, or it is used to communicate through calling. Number four, radio, 1887. Radio was invented by Guglielmo Marconi. Radio is used to report news using only the voice. So, next is television, 1947. Television was invented by Philo Taylor Farnsworth II. Television, it is more improved communicating to the viewers because it shows picture and more detail compared to radio. So, when we see a TV or television, when someone reporting about what's happening out to our world or in the Philippines, we know and we can understand easily because it is more detailed about radio because radio is only using their voice to report to us. Then, six is online video. It is used to watch video clips, TV shows, and movies from the internet. Number seven, email 1982. Email was invented by Ray Tomlinson. Electronic mail or email is a method of exchanging message between people using electronic devices. Number 8. I am or chat, 1994. The first online chat system was called Talcomatic, created by Doug Brown and David R. Woolley. So, chat refers to any kind of communication over the internet that offers a real-time transmission of text message from sender to receiver. Thank you. Hi, our topic for this week is media and globalization. Uh, in this uh, in this section, you are expected to um, analyze how different forms of media drive various manifestations of global integration and uh, to explain the dynamics between local and global cultural production. All right, so let's begin. Uh, what is culture? Culture refers to the unified style of human knowledge beliefs and behavior from which people learn and the ability to communicate knowledge to the next generations so this is actually um it's it, it's the, the development of culture it has been mainly influenced by media so some na culture na to so it has something to do with the, with the language that we use the traditions no, kada mga, festi mga festivities nga itong ginahimo, celebrations, our art, the norms, uh, the values that we have. So that those are, the, the, that's what we call culture, right? And then um, media. Media is the means of communication. Uh, how we are able to communicate our language, our traditions, our art, our norms, our values, our music, our dances, etc. So, um, and media has underwent um, changes or development. So there are five five stages of the history of media. One is oral communication, is script, printing press, electronic media, and digital media. Okay, so when we say oral communication, the first step or the first stage is this is the language was the tool of, to communicate and share information. So there was no other way to communicate communication, uh, communicate information but through oral communication or through the use of language. So um, very limited ang reach sa oral, uh, uh, on the oral stage because um, 
uh, mostly an interaction is between uh, the tribe within the tribe within the within the your group of people within your your community only no okay um pag nag share ka of nag store ka of information um dili siya may kanang parehas sa written nga precise yun nga the same gihapon siya mapasa not unless other cultures actually or other group of peoples before ang uh, ilang culture ang ilang tradition or mga information history is actually being carried to the next generation through songs no gibutan nila sa kanta uh, like for example uh, mga dula, tula, mga nga na diha nila gibutang uh, i-repeat, repeat, repeat, memorize siya, and ipasa sa, from one generation to the other generation, so yung ana ang uh, on that stage oral communication, then eventually nag-evolve and uh, we uh, media enters into the second stage, which is, which is a script, so in this stage, a uh, script allowed people to communicate over a larger space and for much longer duration so unlike sa oral shorter duration ra siya kay malimtan siya or mamatay ang katong naihawak sa information dili na siya mapasa but in the script it is written so therefore it already allows uh, longer duration to keep unless mawala masunog ang gisulatan sa information so uh, shorter na siya, pero pag dili, mas longer na siya and larger space because katong gisuwatan, mapasa-pasa naman siya madala, madala na siya sa mga lagyong lugar, right? Na dili siya malintan because it's already written. So, eventually nag-develop na po and then we enter into the printing press stage. So, the printing press allowed the, the continuous production, reproduction and circulation of print materials right so mona nitong nani mga written documents that were mass produced uh, this period of media development affected globalization by transforming uh, different institutions such as schools markets businesses churches governments and even the the military right so because uh nakapag mass produce naman ta uh, information is already written and mass produced and circulated okay, so then we uh, move to the next phase which is the electronic media so pag electronic media na nadiri ang telephone o nag una sa telegraph so nag una sa telegraph and then after telegraph uh, telephone tas na na TV na na radio na na film so, uh, mas broader pa yun ang reach sa information. No? Uh, before, radio was actually used to advertise products and television was primarily used for uh, the speeches of the President of the United States or the United Nations meetings. So, mo na primarily used niya. Eventually, na-develop na advertising na, entertainment na, etc. Ito sa karong nga, nga time. And then, here comes the digital media age. So, sa dig dig digital media age, muna na itong gamit ka ron na uh, using codes na um, it can be created and stored in any digital electronic devices and it is transmitted over the internet and computer networks. So, um, digital media is used in politics and in economics. In politics, uh, it's used to, for, to advance their campaign, their platforms. And in economics, it allows the advertisement of products and online businesses transactions. So, mana siya. So, with this development, uh, what happens to the culture? So, on culture, there are actually uh, three... Uh, theories no nga nahita bo sa culture so una ana is the cultural differentialism so the uh, cultural differentialism meaning cultural differences are as immutable um na, na differentiate ang mga culture especially the western culture and the 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 islam so western versus islam 
uh, na highlight ang dif difference nila right uh, another concept that was created because of the development is the cultural convergence. So, naapoy na nabuo nga cultural con convergence, meaning the culture of one group to another group, culture of one country to another country, uh, has grown in, in, murag na himo na siyang the same, no? Because uh, as each one, uh, as each one has, uh, like, na influence siya, ni adapt siya. so there's a growing sameness of culture and that is what we call cultural convergence the third one is cultural hybridity so there's already a hybrid culture a uh, globalization uh, spawns an increasing and ongoing mixing of culture so there's an ongoing mixing uh, one of the reason for that is media and also the reason for that is the movement of people so people move from one place to another media has span has reached a wider range so therefore there's already a, a mixing a continuous mixing of culture okay so in, in this uh these outcomes of the media uh it it set the dynamics between local and global cultural production so here comes the globalization which is it which is uh, actually na form siya from the word globalization and localization which is a new concept and which is also brought about by the increased frequency of contact among cultures so this localization reinforces the fact that local cultures are not weak uh, it's not static or it's not fixed but it continuously develop it is built and it is understood uh, it is understood anew, meaning um, na in every passing day, ang atong culture is understood in a different perspective. Uh, so, na siya, na, 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 na evolve siya. Dili siya constant, dili siya weak, dili siya static. Okay? So, local cultures continue to accommodate and assimilate cultures of the world due to globalization. Right? So, all in all, uh, the five stages of development of media have greatly influenced the globalization of culture um, from from the pamphlets to the Instagram uh, by word of mouth uh, to printed na na himong pamphlet na himong newspaper karon na na Instagram na na Twitter na na Snapchat Facebook on sa pamandiha ang social media that, that we use in order to connect and communicate with with uh, people so moreover the increase in cultural interactions generated by media results in outcomes that exhibit the vigor of local cultures influenced by the global culture so mas mas na ang atong local cultures is we are open we uh, because of the development of media, we are open to a wider perspective. We uh, are introduced to the global culture, so therefore our culture evolved and it continual, continuously evolved and adapt uh, new ways of life, new, uh, in short, new culture. Okay, so there. If you have questions, you know where to post your questions. So again, um, this is Media and Culture, and see you next week. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Engine Cadet Clark Anthony Raganas, and today I'll be reporting about the history of global media, and I will take the topics during the pre-industrial age and industrial age. So for... For introduction, we all know that tanang butang na history or kung binisaya pa on kung unsa istorya sa sinugdanan o gi gikanan. So parehas sa atong gipanggamit karon na mga laptop, mobile phones, social media sites, TV, pictures, camera, internet o guban. Mga lain-laing butang mga gigamit na to para makapag-communicate sa laing tawo o sa laing-laing lugar. So karon akong unahon og storya sa inyo ha ang mga medias nga gigamit nato sa pag-communicate sa una sa times sa pre-industrial age. So 
pre-industrial age. So, a time before there were there, there were machines and tools that help perform tasks. People discovered fire, developed papers from plants, and forged weapons and tools with stone, bronze, copper, and iron. So, ang pre-industrial age mao ni ang time nga wala pa yung mga makina. Ang mga tao mao pa in time pag-discover sa sa ang pagkayo, time na nga ni-develop nila nga pwede sa makahimo og papel gumikan sa mga kahoy og tanom. Og ang mga sandata nato is hinimo ra sa bato, bronze, copper and iron. So og karon ako ipakita ninyo ang mga gigamit natong butang or mga pamaagi sa una sa pag express sa media or pag communicate nato sa time nga napata sa pre-industrial age. So Example for number one is cave paintings. So, also known as parietal art, are painted drawings on cave walls or ceilings, mainly of prehistoric origin, dated to some 40,000 years ago, around 38,000 BCE in Eurasia. They are of, often located in areas of caves that are not easily accessible. Some theories hold that caves Paintings may have been a way of communicating with others, while other theories ascribe a religious or ceremonial purpose to them. So, kung karon dili ra kayo, dali ra kayo para nato mag picture picture para i express kung unsay na feel nato, i may di o i post dali nato sa Facebook sa Instagram. So, sa so una, wala pa tayo camera nga magamit para picture-picture o ang pag-express sa mga tao sa una is ang paggamit through painting. Some of the theories nag-ingon nga ang cave paintings is pamaagi sa una para maki, makipag-communicate ang mga tao o ila po gigamit para sa mga religious ceremony. So, mga to ang cave painting. And next is the Clay tablet in Mesopotamia. Cuneiform character, characters were imprinted on a wet clay tablet with a stylus often made of reed, reed pen. Once written upon, many, many tablets were dried in, a, in the sun or air, remaining fragile. Later, these unfired clay tablets could be soaked in water and recycled into new clean tablets. So, other tablets once written were fired in hot cleans or in a divergently when buildings were burned down by accident or during conflict, making them hard and durable. Collections of these clay documents made up the very first archives. They were at the root of first libraries. Tens of thousands of written tablets, including many fragments, have been found in the Middle East. So, Kung karon naaman tay mga tablet, iPads o unsa pa na diha na sila. So sa una na sila gitawag og clay tablets nga nakit-an sa Mesopotamia. And then ang mga clay tablets hinimo ni siya sa mga basa nga clay og na sila ipang curve sa clay using a uh, sa red 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 pin then ilang paoghon then until mo gahi nga mahimo kini og lig-on nga gahi siya. So number 3 next is Papyrus in Egypt. So, papyrus in Egypt. Papyrus is a material similar to thick paper that use that was used in an ancient times as writing surface. It was made from the pit of the papyrus plant. Cyperus, papyrus, a wetland sedge, can also refer to a document written on a sheets of such material joined together side by side and rolled up into scroll and early. So, Kanang naa sa left, sa left side, mauni siya ang gitawag nga papyrus. Kani. So, mauna siya gitawag nga papyrus nga nakitaan sa Egypt. And, papil ni siya nga muragi painting gani niya og maong ginganlan lang siya og papyrus is because ang duga sa papyrus plants ang gigamit pang painting. Kanang naa sa to, oh, nga side, niya, mauna siya ang papyrus plant. So next is 
Nakita Durna in Rome. So, the first form of Acta Durna appeared around 131 BC during the Roman Republic. Their original content included results of legal proceedings and outcomes of trials. Later, the content was expanded to public notices and announcements and other noteworthy information such as prominent births, marriage, and death. After a couple of days, the Senate them to the governors for information. Later emperors used them to announce royal or senational decrees and events of the court. Other forms of acta were legal, municipal, and military notices. So, so and kaning acta dorna is money siya ang murag letter nga gigamit sa una for legal purposes. Karon di ba naman tayo mga NSO, mga marriage contract, Birth certificate, birth certificate, and um, papil nga government and legal purposes like warrant of arrest, ana, mga yung anak niya. So, kung naata anak ka ron, naapun na sila sa una, pero gitawag nila og acta door na og nakit anak sa room. So, next one is... So, magisgot na sa ta sa industrial age. So, the industrial revolution was transitioned to new manufacturing process in the period from 1760 to sometimes between 1820 and 1840. People used the power of steam, developed machine tools, established iron production, and the manufacturing of various products including books through printing press. So, kanin siya sa industrial age, kanin mo na gamit na kita o machine, pero mas dili kayo pareha karon nga marag high tech na juga kayo. Uh, so, ma, I'll give you the example of industrial age. So, telephone. Number one is telephone. In 1876, Bell invented a telephone in which the human voice was the next to be delivered through wires. So, kani kay makuana, ma, madungog na nato siya, bisa layo ta. Pwede na siya, pwede na nato gamiton ang telephone. Moto niya. Next is typewriter. The first typewriter to be commercially successful was patented in 1868 by Americans Christopher Latham Scholes, Frank Heaven Hall, Carlos Gladen, and Samuel W. Soul in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Although Scholes soon disowned the machine and refused to use or even recommend it. Kani typewriter kaba ka familiar nam kita ning typewriter guro nya kaning Mura ni siya kaning dire ka magsuwat ba. Pero gamit na ni niya kay kaning through kuan mag-type ka ni. So next, telegraph communications. Developed in 1830s and 1840s by Samuel Morse, 1791 to 1872 and other inventors, the telegraph revolutionized long distance communication it worked by transmitting electrical signals over a wire laid between station so kani telegraph communication kay na develop ni siya pag 1830s by Samuel Morse siya nakauna ni nya ah, siya naka develop ani nya nindot ni siya kay maka maka communicate naka within long distance maka communicate na mo so next Motion picture. The history of film technology traces the development of film technology from the initial development of moving pictures. At the end of 19th century to the present time, motion pictures were initially exhibited as a fairground novelty and developed into one of the most important tools of communication and entertainment in the 20th century. So, kani Mauni siya, magkaning magpicture mo siya sa through communication. And next is kinetoscope, a single viewer film system which allowed the person to individually watch a film. So, so kinetoscope is kaning actually wala pa jud ko kita ani niya. Unsa ni nga kuan and So, for my own understanding, kinetoscope is a uh, kaning murag video gani nga kaning for exhibition kanang malingaw ang mga tawa sa so, una kay mga bid karon gani na tay mga video karon nga kuan. 
makita na to nya kani siya kay mo ni gamit na saon nga namurag ma kuan gay sa mga tao kanang tan-aw nila ba nga murag ni magliuk-lihok ni siya ba so for exhibition and good afternoon everyone i'm engine cadet lane jo paul now i'm continuing the history of global media my topic is electronic age and digital age electronic age overlap in the industrial age and electronic age happened when human being realized the information and relevance of information as a commodity the electronic age is characterized by the way human consume information in a rapidly developing pace leading us toward what they call the information society the development of the fax machine and cell phone and also resulted in a faster way of transmitting messenger consuming con causing telegraph to eventually die soon cable and satellite technologies also proved the way for the faster transmitter with the development of broadcasting industry particularly the expansion of radio and television which term mass media took its full effect as it hung by habits of various cultures especially in the 1950s and 1960s electronic age is portable gadgets like the sony walkman and sony discam revel re re revolutionized the way for some access to mass media as for the for film there were also tape formats like vhs and disc formats like the short live blazer disc vcd and now dvds while the digital age digital age refers to our current age where information is still seen as a community yet it's made of recording storage and delivering the and playback relies heavily on digital technologies digital age this was ev evident in the way the personal computer involved during the time when Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak of Apple fame, the IBM company and the uh, and later Bell gadgets of Windows were introducing various models and prototypes of hardware and software during the late 1970s. The digital age saw the emergence of digital photograph with the ad advent of the digital single lens reflex camera also known as DL DSLR and that's all my topic electronics is the branch of physics and technology concerned with the design of circuits using transistors and microchips and with the behavior and movement of electrons in a semiconductor conductor vacuum or gas the history of electronics is a story of the 20th century in three components, the vacuum tube, the transistor, and the integrated circuit. In 1883, Thomas Alva Edison discovered that electrons will flow from one metal conductor to another through a vacuum. This discovery of a conduction became known as the Edison effect. In 1904, John Fleming applied the Edison effect in inventing a two-element electron tube called a diode, and Lee de Forest followed in 1906 with a three-element tube, the triode. These vacuum tubes were the devices that made manipulation of electrical energy possible so it could be amplified and transmitted. The first applications of electron tubes were in radio communications. Guglielmo Marconi pioneered the development of the wireless telegraph in 1896 and long-distance radio communication in 1901. Early radio consisted of either radio telegraphy or radio telephony. 
both relied on the triode and made rapid advances thanks to armed forces communications during World War I. Early radio transmitters, telephones, and telegraph used high voltage sparks to make waves and sound. Vacuum tubes strengthened weak audio signals and allowed these signals to be superimposed in radio waves. In 1918, Edwin Armstrong invented a super heterodyne receiver that could select among radio signals or stations and could receive distant signals. Radio broadcasting grew astronomically in the 1920s as a direct result. Armstrong also invented wideband frequency modulation, or FM, in 1935. Only AM, or amplitude modulation, had been used from 1920 to 1935. Communications technology was able to make huge advances before World War II, as more specialized tubes were made for many applications. Radio as the primary form of education and entertainment was soon challenged by television, which was invented in the 1920s, but didn't become widely available until 1947. Bell Laboratories publicly unveiled the television in 1927, and its first forms were electromechanical. When an electronic system was proved superior, Bell Labs engineers introduced the cathode ray picture tube and color television. But Vladimir Zwerkin, an engineer with the Radio Corporation of America, is considered the father of the television. Because of his inventions, the picture tube, and the iconoscope camera tube. Development of the television as an electronic device benefited from many improvements made to radar during World War II. Radar was a product of studies by a number of scientists in Britain of the reflection of radio waves. An acronym for radio detection and ranging Radar measures the distance and direction to an object using echoes of radio microwaves. It is used for aircraft and ship detection, control of weapons firing, navigation, and other forms of surveillance. Circuitry, video, pulse technology, and microwave transmission improved in the wartime effort and were adopted immediately by the television industry. By the mid-1950s, television had surpassed radio for home use and entertainment. After the war, electric tubes were used to develop the first computers, but they were impractical because of the sizes of the electronic components. In 1947, the transistor was invented by a team of engineers from Bell Laboratories, John Bardeen, Walter Brattain, and William Shockley received a Nobel Prize for their creation, but few could envision how quickly and dramatically the transistor would change the world. The transistor functions like the vacuum tube, but it is tiny by comparison, weighs less, consumes less power, is much more reliable, and is cheaper to manufacture with its combination of metal contacts and semiconductor materials. The concept of the integrated circuit was proposed in 1952 by Geoffrey W. A. Dahmer, a British electronics expert with the Royal Radar Establishment. Throughout the 1950s, transistors were mass-produced in single wafers and cut apart. The total semiconductor circuit was a simple step away from this. It combined transistors and diodes, which are active devices, and capacitors and resistors, those who are passive devices, on a planar unit or chip. The semiconductor industry and the silicon integrated circuit evolved simultaneously at Texas Instruments and Fairchild Semiconductor Company. By 1961, integrated circuits were in full production at a number of firms, and designs of equipment changed rapidly and in several directions to adapt to the technology. Bipolar transitions and digital integrated circuits were made first. But analog ICs, large-scale integration, and very large-scale integration followed by the mid-1970s. VLSI consists of thousands of circuits with on and off switches or gates between them on a single chip. Microcomputers, medical equipment, video cameras, and communication satellites are only examples of devices made possible by integrated circuits. With all that being said, the future still has a lot in store for us in the electronics world. Let's just say, we are just getting started. So, 
hi guys i am engine kadit lim i am from group 7 and my report is all about global media so let's start with movement of culture mass communication influence both society and culture various types of correspondence including messages in the mass media give shape and construction to society additionally mass media outlets can spread cultural knowledge and artistic works around the globe a cultural movement in, is a change of way a number of different dis disciplines approach the work this embodies all art forms the sciences and the philosophies historically various countries or localities of the world have gone through their own autonomous grouping of developments in but as world communication have accelerated this geographical distinction has become less distinct so mass communication influence affects both or two topics like mass media and media culture it can affect individual or an audience thoughts attitudes and behavior whether it is written televised or spoken mass media reaches a large audience mass media's role are effect in shaping modern culture uh, the influence of mass media has an effect of uh, also in aspect of human life which can include voting a certain way individual views and blips so the next is the characteristic technology driven so technology driven and the me i mean the technology and the media are interwoven and neither can be separated from the contemporary society in the most core and semi peripheral nations this media is a term that refers to the all print digital and electronic means of communication from the time the printing was created technology was influenced how and where the information is shared today it is impossible to discuss media and the ways of societies communicate without addressing the fast moving pace of the technology change so technology creates media without technology uh, media would not exist but remember technology is more than just have the media that we are supposed to next is integration of economies allows cultural exchange and global spread of knowledge capitalism capitali capitalist propaganda is a promotion of capitalism often via mass media education or other institution primarily by ruling private and political elite populist can is commonly deployed in capi capitalist countries to the main the cultural by positioning uh, it as the supreme and only valid system eliminating opposing and dissenting views and portraying non-capitalist perspective and countries as completely incompetent and infer inferior thus reinfor re reinforcing um, capitalism as the dominant ideology so there's a video so you can understand more
Truths Continue, Relationship Between Globalization and Media. The mass media are today seen as a playing key role in ex enhancing globalization and facilitating cultural exchange on multiple flows of information and images between countries through international news broadcasts, television programming, te new technologies, film, and music. So the relationship of the two in the wor world or countries were really, really relative, relatively national in scope. Since then, the most communication media have become increasingly global extending the reach beyond the nation states to conquer audiences worldwide international flows of information have been largely largely uh, assisted by the development of global capitalism new technologies and the increasing of commercialization of global te television which has occurred as the consequence of the regulation of, of policies. How does the media affect globalization of culture? So the media have an important impact of on culture cultural globalization in two in two mutually interdependent ways. First, the media provide an extensive transnational transmission of cultural products and secondly they contribute they contribute to the information of communicative networks and social structures so online news is a contemporary form of editorial content is which distribute through worldwide via internet it has features on current affairs uh, presented solely in combination as like text, audio, video, or some interactive forms like news games through digital media technology. This is your professor Joe Fermaninang once again, and here I'm going to talk about globalization and the media. So Speaking of the media and globalization, globalization entails the spread of various cultures of ideas and relies on media as a conduit to spread them. According to law, media is a means of conveying something such as a channel of communication. Other commentators uh, would refer to it as technologies of mass, mass communication such as books, magazines, newspapers, radio, film, television, internet, websites, social media, and blogs. For McLuhan, media as a form of technology reshapes societies. Uh, different media extend and amputate the human senses. They expand the reach of communication, but they also dull the user's communicative capacities. The media make the perception of the world contract. It homogenizes and imperializes culture, uh, spreading kinds of values that are consumed. But the media content or text is differently and actively interpreted by audiences because of their diverse cultural backgrounds. Hence, media content is dynamic and open-ended. Social media such as Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Uh, have democratized communication, which enable users to be consumers and producers of information. But the darker side of social media, like segmentation, has been aggravated by the nature of social media feeds, which leads users to read uh, the same media content by like-minded friends. This precludes users from reading information that challenge their viewpoints, uh, hence making them close-minded. Segmentation produces uh, what we call a herd mentality. They can be exploited by others for their own intentions. Think of trolls or fake accounts that hack real accounts, and fake news that manipulate public opinion, clamp down dissent, and suppress critical media. This being undemocratic, we must be vigilant and learn how to distinguish what's true from what's false. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel, ThinkTube, for more related videos. So, good day, sir. 
I'm the cadet Egot, so I'm going to discuss or report the global media culture. So, global media culture explore the relationship between the media culture and globalization. The course approaches past and current challenges concerning international communication and explores and problematize the power of media representation. And also, important of global media culture is the impact of cultural globalization into mutually interdependent ways. Firstly, the media provide an extensive transnational transmission of culture products and, and secondly, they contribute to the information of communicative network and social structures. The rapidly growing supply of media products from international media cultures presents a challenge to exist local and national cultures. The sheer volume of the supply as well as the vast technological infrastructure infrastructure and financial capital that push the supply forward have a considerate, considerable impact on local patterns of cultural consumption and possibilities for sustaining an independent cultural production. So, global media, global media culture create a continuous cultural exchange in which crucial aspects such as identity National, nationality, nationality, religion, behavioral norms, and way of life are continuously questioned and challenged. This cultural encounter counters often involve the meeting of cultures with a different socioeconomic, based typically a transnational and a commercial cultural industry. On one side, a national, public, publicly regulated cultural industry. On the other side. Due to, their, due to their very structure, global media promote a structuring of culture and social communities. Just as media, such as the press and letter, radio and TV, have been very important institutions for the formation of national communities. Global media So, global media support the creation of new communities so the internet for example not only facilitates communication across the globe but also support the information of new communities in which members can interact with each other and also satellite tv and radio allow immigrants to be in close contractualization and differentiation this duality will be as in Central future in the analysis of cultural globalization. So, culture affects global media is influenced by culture as much as the programming of sto stories that they are enveloped within media cannot escape the cultural influence. So, culture provides media with source of for content. All contents are derived from culture including entertainment news and advertisement so as my research some sociologists today predict that the world is moving closer to a global culture void of cultural diversity a fundamental means by which culture come to resemble each other is via the phenomenon of cultural diffusion or the spreading of, of standards across culture. Culture have always influenced each other through travel, trade, and even conquest. As populations today travel and settle around the globe, however, the rate of culture cultural diffusion is increasing increasing dramatically. Example of social forces that are creating a global culture include electronic communications like telephones, email, fax machines, the mass media television and also the mass media television, radio and film. So the news media, the internet, the internet, international business and banks 
United Nation to the name only a few. Even places like Global Village seem to imply that the world is growing smaller every day. Still, will many aspects of culture have been globalized? Local society and culture remain stable, and and many instances are being affirmed. Utilization, all that people may relocate on the other side of the planet, they tend to remain faithful to their culture or origin of origin, culture of origin. So, next. So, how how media affect culture and how culture affect media? So, first, media affect culture. The media affects affects people in varied ways. Some are positive, uh, and other are negative. So let's start the positive. So positive aspect aspects. The media show as constructive information. It can boost self-esteem, heighten interest levels in a particular subject, or encourage them. It is a get get away to place unknown, foreign, and magical with knowledge. Of what goes on around us without being physical, physically present in that place, like video games today are increasing active oriented, and also making kids get of their behind and engage in games that require physical movement. So also media, media also help us engage with other people around the world and be more open and understanding towards other cultures. So the negative aspect is like kids are influenced easily by what they see on television, on the internet. Like if not an as extreme to on the lines of violence on elders or kids their age. So obesity is on the rise of kids who plant themselves in front of the television, not budging for hours or on end. The media can influence to do things that are not moral like getting into sometimes abuse so culture affects media so culture affect, affects media culture is the is the set of learned behaviors belief attitudes and ideals that are characteristic of a particular society of population media is influenced by culture as much as the programming or stories that they are envel enveloped within. Media cannot escape the cultural influence. Culture provides media with sources for content. All contents are derived from culture, including entertainment, news, and advertisement. So, global media culture, for example, is the global is the network sorry net network because network serve as the fundamental of media a network is global or international so I wanna share some example of global media culture so advanced soldier there are advantage and disadvantage of global media culture. Advantage is people can have common frames of preference across wide geographic areas and across social economic boundaries. This makes communication easier between groups, and that's always a big plus. A big plus uh, advantage is people have easier access of information, like nowadays, like uh, television, red internet, and in fact. They have access of other countries sat like satellite TV channels. With those all easy access in many regions, Western television shows become more popular. Global media made it easier for the for people to learn about other culture via yeah, TV shows or like nowadays uh, high technology. So disadvantage of global media culture is homogeneity of thought and expe expectation staples innovation it's easier to spend time being 
possibly entertain than it is to learn a new skill or language or hobby or whatever. Is your access to this information and harder to tell the difference? So, the disadvantage in global media culture as well is one thing like satellite TV channels. It is a good thing when people learn about different culture by watching satellite TV channels. But become problematic when one forget their own culture by watching foreign TV shows like nowadays. So, for more for more information, clarification, I have a video video about global media cultures.